Hello and welcome to this graduate course on functional analysis. Let me say some uh, something about the organization of the course before we begin. So I will be posting new videos on my YouTube channel every Monday for the whole week. Okay, and the lecture notes as well as the solved exercises are available on, on my website, as usual. Uh, and you can ask your questions, actually, either by in the comments of the video on YouTube or by sending me an email. Now, uh, I may either do a video Q&A to answer your questions, or we can meet once every two weeks uh, online like Zoom or something, we'll see. Uh, but frankly, because of uh, the internet connection and uh, it's not very efficient, actually, this the meeting online, okay? And you can uh, actually download the videos and watch them several times, okay? Um, now, let me just uh, say a remark before we start. The course is demanding. It's considered as a hard course. But if you study regularly, a little bit every day, let us say, then you will find it easy, actually. But the biggest mistake that you, you can make, I know by experience, is to begin studying two weeks before the exam. Okay? So this is very bad because there's a lot of uh, concepts and ideas in this course, so you cannot digest them just in two weeks, okay? Now, we will start from the very beginning, okay? So I'll do the required review. Chapter zero will be a review. So, but before I, I uh, tell you about the, the structure of the course, let me say, just introduce the subject. What is functional analysis? If you want a quick definition, we may say that functional analysis is a combination of linear algebra and topology in infinite dimensional vector spaces. So you are familiar already with the concept of a vector space because you studied in first year and second year and third year. But here we are dealing with infinite dimensional vector space, unlike linear algebra, the usual linear algebra in first year, which concentrated on uh, finite dimensional vector spaces. Now, why we are interested in infinite dimensional vector spaces? Because many interesting spaces in analysis are infinite dimensional. And so, for example, if you consider the space of continuous functions from an enclosed interval AB into R, then this is a vector space, as you can check. Okay, because you can define the sum of two functions, uh, the multiplication of a function by a scalar. So it has a vector space structure. But what is the dimension of this space? It's actually infinite. And I will tell you why later. <clears throat> so this is an example of an infinite dimensional space. And uh, more generally, the LP spaces that we start studying in uh, last year are in general infinite dimensional. So spaces of functions are usually infinite dimensional. <clears throat> and uh, the reason will become clear later. Okay. So here, a function is considered as a point or a vector, if you like, in a space which has the usual algebraic structure that you know from first year. So we have the notion of addition of two elements and the notion of multiplication by a scalar and that satisfy the usual properties that you know the, the axioms of vector space okay so and this point of view is actually central in the study of differential equations for example because when you want to prove the existence uh, of a solution to a differential equation we seek the solution in some function space, in the space of functions. Okay, so this is very important in modern analysis. 
And in general, these spaces of functions are equipped with a topology. For example, in the space CAB, we can put a norm. We'll see actually several norms. We can put several norms, and each norm generates a topology. Okay, it generates a distance and therefore a topology. When we have a topology, we can talk about continuous functions, continuous operators. We can talk about conversions of sequences of functions. Okay, so this is where we mix linear algebra and topology in the same structure. Now, another thing in, or, in uh, linear algebra of first year, we usually consider um, finite dimensional spaces and linear operators between them. And you know that a linear operator is determined by a matrix, actually, in some basis. In this course, we shall consider infinite dimension spaces, as you said, <clears throat> and linear operators bet acting between these spaces. Okay, So this is a generalization of what you learn in first year about linear algebra and what you learn in second and third year about topology. Okay, So this is why it's a little bit demanding, because we need to know the basics of linear algebra that we shall review a little bit. There will also be a, a lengthy section uh, about topology in the third video, because we need to understand general topology if we want to understand functional analysis. So this is why I made a preliminary chapter, which is basically a review. And so this is the plan. So there will be five chapters. Chapter zero, uh, preliminaries. So I will review the needed uh, results from set theory, topology, linear algebra, normal spaces that we shall use later. So uh, in, in the, the basic part of this chapter will be a review, but there are some, maybe there will be some new ideas that you didn't encounter before. So it's a foundational chapter. Okay. Chapter one is about the R2 theorems, uh, two main theorems, two important theorems in function analysis. The arzela ascoli theorem uh, about compactness of sets in a function space and the stone weierstrass theorem, which is an approximation theorem. Chapter 2, this is the beginning of function analysis, is about several forms of the Hahn-Banach theorem. There are three forms, an analytic form and two geometric forms. Okay. Chapter 3 is also essential in function analysis. Uh, it's about three big theorems in function analysis, the uniform boundedness, the boundedness principle, <coughs> or <coughs> the Banach-Steinhaus, it's also called the Banach-Steinhaus theorem, the open mapping theorem, and the closed graph theorem. Chapter four is the is lengthier than the others. It's about weak topologies, so topology is that you can put on a vector space other than the norm topology. We'll talk also about reflexive spaces and separable spaces, and also about uniform convexity. So this is maybe uh, the most difficult chapter in this course, okay? because we'll mix everything we learned before in this chapter. And usually, uh, most of the questions in the exam uh, are about this chapter. Okay? So this is really a synthesis of uh, functional analysis and the last the last chapter is about lp spaces that we start learning last year <clears throat> so we shall revisit these spaces and in the light of the previous chapters okay so we'll study reflexivity separability of these spaces okay so this is the plan and i will end by a series of references if you want to dig deeper into functional analysis, because this is an introductory course. If you want to dig deeper, uh, there's the wonderful book of Brezis, Functional Analysis, Sobolev Spaces, and Partial Differential Equations, <coughs> uh, which covers material not covered in this course, especially Sobolev Spaces and Partial Differential Equations. But uh, 
I followed closely the first four chapters of this course, of this book. Uh, there's also another uh, a book uh, by Daniel Lee. It's called, <coughs> in French, Cours d'analyse fonctionnelle. <coughs> it has a lot of exercises. There's also a wonderful book by Royden and Fitzpatrick. It's called Real Analysis. There is also a book by Seidler, Applied Function Analysis, Main Principles and Their Applications. It's a classic book. We have also the book of Kreitzik. We have uh, also a very good book by several authors, including Marianne Fabian. It's called Banach Space Theory. It's actually uh, more, um, uh, it's, it's about the geometry of Banach spaces. So we, we will not cover uh, this material action in this course, but if you want to dig deeper, this is a good book. If you want to specialize in the geometry of Banach spaces. So it's, it's, it's very advanced actually. And uh, if you want to dig deeper uh, to uh, improve your knowledge of chapter zero about preliminaries, there's a wonderful book by Bankris, it's called Topology. And a very short, nice book by Paul Halmus called Naive Set Theory. Okay, <clears throat> so now let me tell you that uh, if you want to just succeed this course, you don't need all these references because it's too much. The lecture notes are more than enough, <clears throat> okay, for this introductory course. But of course, you have to do the exercises and preferably on your own before you see the solution. Okay, so, but I, I give you these references because if you want to dig deeper or, or if you want to specialize in, in function analysis someday, and uh, there are some results that I don't prove in this course because they are uh, difficult or I don't have time to cover them. So you can look them in the references. Okay, so this concludes this first video, the introduction to this course. And uh, please, uh, let me know if you have some questions. You can uh, write your questions in the comments below the video, or you can send me an email, or you can leave them to the online meeting that we may hold in two weeks. But please prepare your questions uh, in the online meeting, okay? So we can profit uh, from the time, okay? So, Thank you for your attention, and next video, I will start chapter zero, the first section about the axiom of choice.